Last November, my mental illness cascaded to the point that I enrolled in a psychiatric hospitalization program. I was deeply depressed, paralyzed by anxiety, and too frantic to function. I was a wreck. A couple of days in, I attended an art therapy session. I turned over a piece of paper to start writing. I hadn't really been able to write well for a while. Basic tasks like reading and having conversations were hard to accomplish at that point. Depression makes it very difficult to enjoy doing even the things you love most. But for the sake of the therapy, I wanted to try. So I looked to someone else's words for inspiration. I'd been thinking about something Jen Frank said about Mario on a podcast I'd been listening to. He is the video game character, she said. He is the jump man, and you can have him jump over anything. And with that thought in my mind, I wrote these words. He is the jump man. He jumps the way a child jumps, with commitment and absolute confidence, a liberation that only inexperience allows. He jumps with a shout of happiness, a thrill for the pure joy of jumping. Woohoo! The act of freeing himself from the world, of for a second almost flying, then drifting downward to earth and bouncing up again before his feet ever touch the ground. He leaps over obstacles, turning toward impediments, seeking out challenges, and leaping on them, over them, atop them, for the marvelous, meaningless thrill of the achievement. I felt an awareness I hadn't experienced in days. My mind cleared a bit, and I started to remember wonderful things. I remember being four years old, maybe younger, my babysitter rolling footballs at my feet, me leaping over them, pretending they were barrels, making Mario's jumping sound, smashing them with my imaginary Donkey Kong hammer. I remember my birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese's and first seeing Super Mario's vast worlds unfolding in front of me in the arcade cabinet. I remember my dad getting me out of school early to play Mario 3 and watching Mario become a 3D cartoon on the N64. And I remember playing with him alongside my wife over a cold winter break in Japan long ago. No matter what the age, what the circumstance, what time of my life, he was there with me. He was my oldest friend. I felt the weight of my cell phone in my pocket and realized he was right there. He was there with me in that windowless hospital basement. I wasn't alone at all. In the mental hospital, They ask you a lot about what you're grateful for and who you're grateful for. I run a podcast about being grateful, but I felt so sick that I hardly felt grateful for anybody. I felt like a hypocrite. But suddenly in that room, I knew who I was grateful for. And for the first time in a long time, I felt something besides awful. It wasn't nostalgia. It was a feeling far more pertinent and powerful. In a moment of deep darkness, it was, for a fleeting second, joy. That night, I went home, and I played Odyssey. And for the first time in a long, long time, I had fun doing something. As the weeks passed, as the medical staff helped bring me back, I played Mario. By day, I sat in process group, consulted with doctors, and tried to heal. By night, I explored a vast, wonderful world with my friend Mario. As I marveled at the convergence of old and new in New Donk City, I learned to jump with joy again, both in the game and in my real life. In the last days before my graduation, I reached darker side. I saw that building off of the distance, and I knew I had to help Mario climb it, again, just as I'd helped him climb that first building as a child in Donkey Kong. Mario had kept growing and kept changing, and he could overcome anything. So could I. And I did it. I've heard some criticism of Odyssey that it's just more Mario, that there's a sameness or datedness to it. But I disagree. Far from seeing Odyssey as regressive, I perceive it at a powerful purpose. To bridge where Mario has come from to where he is going, reveling in a wonderful truth about video games. It's always about hopping over that next barrel. Consider the New Donk City Festival, where all Mario has been, building, climbing, rescue work, coin-grabbing mascot of the Mushroom Kingdom, explorer of secret places, 3D adventure, everything comes together in a celebration of what games are. Odyssey is a love letter from a generation of creators, saying in a beautiful way, he is the jump man. Over the years, Mario's learned to kick, to swim, to pick things up, to fly. When things got weird, he even cracked a whip for a while. But in the end, it keeps coming back to him jumping over things, overcoming the next challenge. And he's just kept jumping over them and inspiring artists to create new things in new games to jump over. Because you see, 
It's all one big game. Video games, all video games, are a challenge to master something, to condense accomplishment into overcoming some obstacle or adversity. They are, in this context, simple and often beautiful. They are drama, the act of trying to jump and failing and then trying again. That's the best of what all of us want to be. Just trying and getting picked up and trying again and failing and getting picked up again and succeeding. That's why we love games. Everything you love about video games is connected. That's what the series is all about. Part diary, part documentary, this is the story of games. Past, present, and future will cover it all with each episode feeding right into the next. It's all just a hop, a blip, and a jump from one topic to another and from the world of games into our own real lives. Some jumps just can't be made alone and I can't make this one without you. Like I learned on Pockets, everybody has a story to tell. This series is a journey you and I are taking together, a celebration of our shared experiences and unique joys, of laughter and tears of what each of us have overcome. In our community and in these episodes, we'll explore the best in all of us. I want you to help tell the story. It's the story of jumping over something, climbing another rung, reaching another stage, discovering a new warp zone, unlocking another secret. How many times have you come around a corner in life or in a game and found yourself stunned by the beauty, the imagination, the spectacle that waited on the other side? This series won't be Nintendo-centric or PC-centric or Xbox-centric or PlayStation-centric. It's about playing games across all the places they exist and about how differences have made gaming stronger. It's really all about jumping over that next gap. It's just the form of the jump that's different. As games have evolved and as each idea is built on the last, the various strengths, quirks, and even weaknesses of each platform have spurred enormous creativity. And that's where we're going with our next jump, to the marvelous, sometimes contentious variety of ways that we play games. Touch screens and controllers, console wars and rivalries. We're going to look at how those differences between the ways we play are, far from being something that divides us, instead the source of some of the greatest innovation in the medium. It's just a hop, a blip, and a jump away. Thank you for this opportunity. I believe in this so much, I just quit my job to do it. I really hope you choose to be a part of it.